Hey everybody, welcome hey everybody, back to welcome Early Headlines. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Today's article comes from, uh, well, there's two articles, the, sci the, the nature.com scientific article and then the live science article uh, by Mindy Weisberger. This article has to do with blue-eyed immigrants transformed ancient Israel 6,500 years ago. So apparently about 4,500 BC, there was a sudden influx of new genes coming from the north, from Turkey and, uh, and Iran. And they, they came down to um, the, the Levant, which is modern day Israel. And I've done a few episodes about Israel before. There's a lot in the previous episodes. There's a lot of stuff that that's yet to be discovered, and that has been discovered, and are being uh, currently either excavated or studied. Something's always going on there, and this one's anything to do with genetics is I'm in entertaining and good for I guess all of archaeology and science that they're they keep adding to um, to the the current database of genetic movement, I guess, and migration. But anyway, before that, though, I kind of want to set the stage a little bit. 6,500 years ago was a period known as the Chocolithic period or the Copper Age. And this period is really interesting. A lot was going on. Metallurgy was coming up. A lot of uh, cultural shifting happened. It seemed like the stuff from the, prior, the, age, the, ne the early Neolithic, the Stone Age, that stu a, a lot of the, the cultural and technical stuff got dropped almost and was replaced by all kinds of new, uh, like I said, metallurgy and other techniques and, and uh, bur cult like burials and stuff like that. In northern Israel, at the time it was called Galilee, apparently there were waves of migrating people from the north and the east and it transformed the emerging culture. So, so scientists knew that the culture rapidly shifted at this time, but what they attributed what they attributed it to was uh, it was all over the place. Some people thought it was like uh, invaders. Some thought there there was like a cultural revolution within the existing population. But this shows that although those may have been some supporting contributions mainly a huge genetic shift a huge migration happened a bunch of basically a bunch of people who didn't really look like the people who lived there in israel they just came in they flooded the area for some reason how do they know this well just like in the previous episodes a lot of stuff that gets discovered is usually is usually because of construction like they want to the government wants to create some site or dig something up and then they'll stumble upon a trove of, of artifacts or information. And this is no different. They found a cave in Israel that had a bunch of skeletons in it. The site in the north of the tiny country contains dozens of burials and more than 600 bodies dating to approximately 6,500 years ago. So they found a, a cave. It's a natural cave, too. And there were all kinds of pots, urns. Um, ossuaries, which which are like containers or rooms dedicated, like a like a like dedicated to dead people, kind of like a a sepulcher, I guess, or a, it's like a crypt almost. And they found a bunch of preserved bodies, and um, they studied those bodies, and they found that they again they found a they had blue a uh, fair skin and blue eyes, and this is sixty five hundred years ago. Uh, the skeletons that were preserved in the cave were genetically distinct from people who historically lived in that region. So up until that point, there was a population of people who had very similar, they had a homogenous gene pool compared to the people who came, who came in from the north. So the genetic differences matched those of people who lived in neighboring Anatolia, which is Turkey, and the Zagros Mountains, which are now part of Turkey and Iran. So they, they're assuming that because they're assuming these people came from the north because of because of this because the ge the genetics were very similar. Uh, the southern Levant experienced a significant cultural shift during the late Chalcolithic period, uh, 4500 to 3800 BC, with denser settlements, more rituals performed in public, and a growing use of ossuaries and funerary pr preparations. Yeah, so so people were this rituals performed in public, 
this is a big deal because you're kind of spreading the, or they, not you, but they were kind of spreading their ideas in the public and things kind of, instead of things being more insular and more tribal before this, they kind of came out with their ideas in public. It was more accessible. And so because of that, things spread pretty quickly. And a lot, again, but like I mentioned before, up until now, scientists kind of thought that happened in-house. And when I say in-house, I mean like within that current population. But now it's pretty indisputable that people came in and they changed it. They, put, they threw a monkey wrench in the old system, essentially. The context or the details of which, I don't know what could have happened. But um, these people suddenly pop up and they had burials. So people cared enough about these new, I don't want to call them invaders, but these migrants, we'll say. These new migrants came and then they were buried in such a ritual manner that somebody they weren't just they weren't just invaders cuz cuz their bodies were preserved if you if that makes sense they belonged to the culture and they were valued in the culture uh though some experts had previously proposed that cultural transformation was driven by people who were native to the southern levant the authors of the new study suspected that the waves mi waves of human migration explained the changes uh oh by the way the name of the cave is called the peak Pekian, Pekian Cave, Pekin Cave, which would have been Upper Galilee 6,500 years ago. Inside the cave, they found, the, like I said, jars, burial offerings, hundreds of skeletons. And um, yeah, it was a type of mor mortuary or something, some ritual site. According to Di uh, Dina Shalem, the archaeologist uh, with the Institute for Galilean Archaeology, Shalem says, some of the findings in the cave are typical to the region, but others suggest cultural exchange with remote regions. Uh, the artistic styles of these artifacts bear closer resemblance to styles common to more northern regions of the Near East. The scientists sampled... Oh, before we go on. This is really interesting to me. Um, the artifacts bear closer resemblance to styles common to more northern regions of the Near East. So, okay. You can, you can kind of draw a, a conclusion there that... Um, the people brought with them not only their genes, but their culture and ev all everything else, right? But part part of the mystery of the Chalcolithic period is the Meso. If you look at the Mesoamericans during the same same time period, the their technology also kind of parallels and comes up because they started getting metallurgy as well, and they had artifacts as well from regions outside of their their own. So I would like to see some climate data according uh, and superimpose that data with the data of 6,500 years ago and see what the weather was like. Because if, if the weather wasn't harsh during that time, if it was warming, which I suspect it was, then that makes a lot of sense, right? There, there are probably more people, more food, uh, more prosperity. And that leads to this cultural cross pollination that you get, that you see reported in, in this, article uh, the scientists sampled dna from bone powder from 48 skeletal remains and were able to reconstruct genomes for 22 individuals found in the cave that makes this one of the largest genetic studies of ancient dna in the near east so this is huge and remember this is they were able to reconstruct 22 individuals out of how many 600 600 plus so that tells me that one there's the techniques are getting better and and two that there are pro there's probably more and more interest in these studies and they probably have a huge they have a lot of there's a lot of pieces of the i always mention puzzle pieces i always use that analogy but i think it's the most apt one available and they have all these pieces and they probably have even more than what they're reporting and they're just now starting to have this clear snapshot of what was going on back then uh, let's get, but this blue eyes and fair skin thing is really interesting. Uh, the scientists found that these individuals shared genetic features with people from the north. Uh, those similar genes were absent from farmers who lived in the southern Levant earlier. Uh, for example, the allele that is responsible for blue eyes was associated with 49% of the sample remains. So blue eyes had become super common in the people living in, in that area. Suddenly. So it's really weird. Uh, another allele hinted that fair skin may have been widespread in the local population as well. And here's something interesting. Genetic diversity increased within groups over time, while genetic differences between groups 
decreased. So in a previous episode, I talked about uh, heterozygosity, which is if you have high heterozygosity, you have your gene pools more diverse. And then if, it, if it's low, then it's more um, narrow. So the, the population of Israel or Galilee at the time from 6,500 onward or 4,500 CE or BC onward, their heterozygosity was increasing. I mean, and I don't mean like in a small step, stair step pattern. I mean, from here to right away, the, the heterozygosity was higher. That, typi- that, ta- that pattern typically emerges in populations after a period of human migration, which makes total sense, right? He- and when you're talking about widespread hum- human migration, you're talking about all these new genes flooding an area, mingling with what's in there now, and then what do you- what's the product of that? Oh, a bunch of new genes. That's typically what's happening. The United States of America is a perfect example of that right now. We're getting genes from all over the world in- into this area, and we're having all kinds of mixed people and all that stuff. And the genetic diversity is even greater and greater and greater with every passing generation. So if you compare our, the forefathers of the America, like the colonists, and then you compare it to the people now, it's almost, I mean, we still have those people, those original like European colonist genes. But in addition to that, we've got people, we got, the natives of, of the Americas. We've got Asian people. We've, we've got people from the Middle East, pe- people from India. We've got all kinds of genes, Africa. So it's a completely, from a genetic sp- standpoint, the heterozygosity of the U.S. is huge. So that's something akin to that m- happened. And as far as the, 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 more, the, the details of that, are, we don't know. So, but I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll f- discover another cave that'll fill in those gaps. But right now, this is a huge leap forward in our understanding of that time period. Uh, Daniel Master, professor of archaeology at Wheaton College, here's what he says. Uh, he wasn't involved in the study, but this is j- just uh, his opinion. One of the key questions of the Chocolithic has always been to what extent the groups in Galilee were connected to the groups in Beersheba Valley, the Jordan Valley, or Golan Heights. These are all areas of that, of the Levant, the entire Levant. And that's interesting. There's probably way more connection than we even thought of. Uh, I think a, lo- a lot of uh, more traditional scholars, they, they don't really connect those dots. They don't make, either they're cautious, they don't make those assumptions, or they don't think about it. But uh, it, it it, it seems like the more traditional uh, viewpoint of this period was these people were just polarized, like they, they, they kept to themselves. There was some interaction here and there, but not as much as the studies show here. I mean, we're talking about mass human migration. That's no small feat. That's a big deal. And th- these studies that are coming out now are showing it, and more and more stuff is coming out that's showing that as well, as evidenced by previous episodes. The artifacts have shown many cultural leaks between these these regions, but it'll be interesting to see whether those links are genetic as well, and I suspect that they are. Um, re- the researchers' results also resolve a long-standing debate about the pivotal factor that changed the trajectory of the Chalcolithic people's unique culture, and the answer is migration. Yeah, it usually is migration, according to a lot of these new studies coming out. Um, for some reason, I guess it's probably because the actual science behind genetic study is still really young. So I don't really blame the older generation of scientists or the more traditional rather for overlooking these t- this type of evidence because, you know, it didn't occur to them for normal reasons. But now that this is all coming out, we can't underestimate genetic study. And I know a lot of people quibble genetic evidence, but it's, it fills in a lot of gaps of, of understanding that we that up until now we we haven't had, and I think it's a tremendous asset to the scientific community that we we have the, this ability to analyze DNA, which is basically chemical information about about us, our species. So we can kind of track them. It's really interesting. We can track the movements of people, even what people look like. And uh, the, the blonde hair, fair skin, I mean, not blonde hair, the blue eyes and fair skin thing is really, that's mind-blowing to me. I, if you're a group of people who 
are dark or dark skinned and you have dark features and brown eyes and then suddenly this huge group of people come in with like who look completely different that in it in and of itself that's culture shock that's culture shock is an understatement that's that's a huge that's almost that's almost akin to the natives meeting cortez for the first time in the 1400s yeah in the 1400s 1500s that era the colonial era they thought they were gods so maybe something like that happened back then where you have these wave of people who probably there were probably rumors of people back then i mean if you were if you were the farmers in the southern southern levant who didn't have those genetics and and then you probably there are probably rumors of blue-eyed people here and there probably but having a like an entire population come down for whatever reason i i'm dying to know the exact reason why they did that i think it might have been a maybe a natural disaster or something that drove them to come down i mean what other incentive could you see war i don't know there, there if, if there was a war there'd be like um or a genocide or something there'd be there'd be uh more evidence indicating that i would think i mean i could be wrong but um if it's just a mass migration because of people who are displaced for whatever reason, that would make the most sense to me. And then uh, those people eventually intermingled with, I'm assuming with the, with the original people, the Southern Levant or original or the people who were there before them. So um, I think this is a great study. I, again, I always say that, I hope new stuff comes out and I don't really have to hope that much because I'm pretty sure new stuff is as I speak is being discovered now. And what do you guys think? Does it make sense? This is, these are, oh, just for a visual, this is where the cave was right next to, right off the shores right there of the Mediterranean. Um, right in the northern part of present day Israel, right there, if you can see my cursor. And then th these are among the things that they found bone dust and yeah they they stumbled into like a morgue like an ancient morgue really interesting stuff what do you guys think tell me in the comments um blonde hair or why do i keep saying blonde hair blue eyes doesn't necessarily mean that blonde hair maybe they did have blonde hair though but they didn't say that in, in the in the article but blue eyes i mean th there's got to be someone's got to have written something down back then what do you think what do you think their interactions were let me know in the comments uh thank you for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow